Hello everyone and welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit and the precept that we are going to address today, God is sought through the reading of His Holy Word. God is sought through the reading of His Holy Word. And we're going to start this off in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. Let's see what Scripture is. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. Go ahead, brother. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Man didn't just create any of this, say, oh, this sounds good, like Kwanzaa and some of the other so-called religions of the world today. Man didn't just create this. All right? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Why? Go ahead, brother. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let's see how we got the scripture now. Let's go to 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20, brother. 1 and 20, go ahead. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. So man didn't just create this, go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Well, how did we get these books? Let's go to Isaiah, the 30th chapter. Isaiah, the 30th chapter. Isaiah 30. And what was good for Isaiah was good for all the prophets. Isaiah 30 and verse 8, brother. 30 and 8, go ahead. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be it for a time to come forever and ever. So just like Isaiah, when he was moved by the angel or the Holy Spirit, he went ahead and he wrote it down in a book. Let's go back to, or let's go to John, the fifth chapter. I was going to say go back to the New Testament. Let's just go to John, the fifth chapter. We know where it's at. At least most of us do. I hope you know where it's at. You can't find salvation without reading this book. John 5, brother, and let's pick it up at verse 41. 5 and 41, go ahead. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. Uh -huh. I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. So Jesus is coming in the name of his Father, bringing the message of salvation, and nobody is even hearing what he's got to say. Nobody wants to hear it. They're hearing it, but it's making them angry, and they don't want to hear it anymore. Go ahead. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Same thing happens today. Joel Osteen and all these other big false prophets out there got all these big churches that carry the Bible and don't even read out of it. And the flocks flock to them and throw their money at their feet. Go ahead, brother. 44. How can ye believe which ye receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Uh-huh. Do not... Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Uh-oh, what happened here? Go ahead, brother. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? So Moses even wrote of Jesus. Moses got the commandments straight from Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was Jesus in the Old Testament dealing with Moses and all the prophets. We've got lessons to prove that, but that's for another time. And Jesus said, if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me because he wrote about me. Mm -hmm. You mean we're supposed to be reading the Bible instead of just carrying it? We're supposed to be proving this Bible. Amen. He said, if you don't believe Moses' writings, how are you going to believe his words? Because he's testifying of everything he gave to Moses. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Let's go to John, the sixth chapter. Just go over one chapter. John 6. Why did God have Moses write his words in a book? Verse 63, brother, go ahead. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That's why Moses wrote a book. That's why Isaiah was told to wrote a book and he wrote a book. That's why all the prophets wrote books. Yeah. Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah, said, I understood by books 
the number of the years to rebuild Jerusalem. He was reading what Jeremiah had written. Everyone's reading, except the modern-day Christian. Mm -hmm. Skip to 67 and see what Peter said. 67, brother, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Uh -huh. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Go ahead, brother. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. How are they sure? Because of his words. They can go back to the old scriptures and the old covenant that they had in the synagogues every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And they can read about Jesus. And they can read his words and they can see that he was the Christ. Mm -hmm. They knew he was the one. Yes, sir. Let's go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. And we're going to read one verse, brother, verse 16. How are we supposed to seek the Lord? Are we just supposed to go and fall on our emotions and hear some good emotional saying or listen to what someone else is telling us we're supposed to do because they're a so-called pastor of a church? Let's see what the Lord says how we're supposed to seek them. 34 and 16, brother, go ahead. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. Uh -huh. For my mouth that it has commanded and his spirit it has gathered them. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's how you seek the Lord. Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Everything we can read in the Old Testament, we should find it somewhere in the New. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Romans 10. Romans 10. Brother, let's pick it up at verse 16 and read 16 and 17 when you get there. Go ahead, brother. But they have not obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? Because they were leaning on traditions of men. Isaiah even said the fear toward God was taught by the traditions of men. But how are you supposed to come to the, come to the God of the creation? Go ahead. 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And hearing by the word of God. How do we prove it's from the word of God and it's not just something made up? Well, let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter. Let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter. The Lord has an answer for all of our questions, yes, sisters and brothers. We just got to seek it out. Mm -hmm. He even said that this wasn't meant for the masses. That's why he spoke in parables. But it was meant for the disciples and not for the others. Why is that? Because the disciples would come to him and say, Lord, we didn't understand it. Will you explain it to us? Mm -hmm. They wanted to know. They had the heart to seek out Christ and to prove him and to prove what he was teaching. So how do you do that? Be like a Berean. 17, Acts 17 and verse 10. Brother, go ahead. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who come thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Uh -huh. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So they received the word with readiness of mind. In other words, they said, all right, I want to, in earnest, I'm going to take notes. I want to hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around after they received the teaching or the prophesying or the preaching or whatever, and they searched the scriptures to see if it lined up with the book. Mm-hmm. Because that's what preachers do. True preachers of God, they search the book to find words that are true. Words that are upright. They piece it together, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And let the book interpret itself. Verse 12, brother. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men, not a few. Therefore many of them believed. Because they were searching the scriptures to see if what was being taught was true. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Ah, oh, we don't have to read that Bible. Do you know it's commanded for us to do that? It's commanded for us to read these scriptures. It might say, might not say, thus saith the Lord, you will read the scriptures to come to me. But when you rightly divide and you discern the scriptures, we're commanded to read them. Matthew 24 and verse 15, brother, go ahead. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Let's go to John the fifth chapter. Gospel of John the fifth chapter, and this will be it. John 5, John 5, 
and we're going to pick it up at verse 39. John 5 and 39, brother, go ahead. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are that they are they and they are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures. This is Jesus telling you to search the scriptures, to be like a Berean. Yep. Because in them you think you have eternal life, but it's the scriptures that testify of him. One more verse, brother. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. And those that don't search the scriptures and prove all things will not come to Christ, and they will not have eternal life. Because it's in searching the scriptures, and it's in finding out what God would have us do and how he would have us conduct ourselves, and repenting from the way that we are serving him now, and doing it according to the way that the scriptures say, it's in that that our salvation lies. So sisters and brothers, once again, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and we hope that somebody got something from this lesson.